Catering in and outside this wall, please contribute. And we will start, or more importantly, uh, the State Contractor Licensing Board will start momentarily. It's my pleasure to welcome Karen Lacey, the Executive Director of the Board of Licensing Contractors for the State of Tennessee. She's been there for almost 30 years, serving as Executive Director since 2005, and she's responsible for overseeing the daily operations of the board, which includes five programs, Contractors Home Improvement and Contractors, Limited License Electricians, and Limited License Plumbers. Welcome, Karen. Thank everyone. Um, thank you so much for inviting us to come here to speak with you today. I do want to introduce the, uh, my co-workers I brought with me, uh, Kathy Holloman and Rhonda Mangelson. So they are the ones that really do everything in the office. So um, if you have other, other questions later on, please be sure to ask them because they'll know the answer as well. But uh, anyway, uh, Make sure I get close to this microphone or a chair. It'll be coming after me wherever we can. So. <laughs> but anyway, I um, did want to give you a little overview. I think I've been at these conferences before, and you all may have already been here and seen my same Opire point that I do every year. So uh, hopefully, I've got something new in there. But um, let's see. Is it this way? I think I did it. Okay. Um, tell you a little bit about the board. Um, it is a nine-member board that's made up of all uh, all contractors except one board member, and they are responsible for approving every license. So we in the office can approve licenses unless it's a renewal. Um, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not going to see. I have to point that way. Right? Okay. And uh, something that uh, everybody asks is, um, what is, you know, what, what do you need to be licensed? And the licensing is uh, in place to protect the, um, the, the safety and um, welfare of the public. And another is to provide a level playing field for uh, the contractors in that industry. And so I wanted to... I may have skipped some pictures, but <laughs> oh, here, here we go. This is just give you some ideas of why we need a uh, why we need a license. So, oh. I am so sorry. This thing is not clicking. Is that the point? That was crazy. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's gonna be it's gonna be a long meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. We've been having problems with that oh, today. It? It okay. Well, oh, and oh, oh, there it goes. Oh, oh, whoa. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Okay, here we go again. I'm sorry. Uh, but, um, these are the reasons why we need a contractor. So I'm going to try this again. Um, another example. <laughs> you all have probably seen these several pictures, but I always think it's funny. Oh, now the electric valve. Electric. And I, I don't know who's to blame on that one. I would say. But the architect would have to be. I think we're going to like an architect. <laughs> Just click one. Whoop. Whoop. There's a definite clicker problem. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Um, I should have, I'm going to have to get where I can read it because I didn't take notes. But um, uh, a contractor's license is required for a job that's 
$45,000 and more. And it's required by the prime contractor, the one we didn't get directly with the owner or the awarding agency. Uh, subcontractors are also required to be licensed. And those are the ones that uh, do the, the trade work, the electrical, the plumbing, the mechanical, HVAC work. And uh, most recently, roofing and masonry also have to be licensed as subcontractors. Okay. Just click one. Did I skip one? Yeah. Um, okay, this, that just explains um, what's required to get a contractor's license. Uh, they do have to take an exam and to have a financial statement prepared by CPA, so to have experience, uh, proof of insurance, uh, register with a, a corporation in their corporation with a secretary of state. So it's a lot to it. It's very expensive. So but Kathy is the one that's in charge of processing all the initial applications. And she also does the ones like uh, if they have a change of ownership. Um, or they want to merge with another company or reorganize due to a bankruptcy, or if they just need to get a separate license because several contractors do have more than one company. So um, the, those are the licenses she processes. And we also have other programs, and that's uh, the home improvement. And home improvement is only required like nine counties. Um, it's also work that's from 3000 up to 25000 And to get this license, there's not an exam required, but it does require experience at a $10,000 $10, surety bond. Now, home improvement, that's probably where we get our most complaints. And that's usually after storm, uh, you know, when people have storm damage, we'll have contractors coming in doing a license work. So uh, a lot of them are unlicensed home improvement contractors. So that's one of our biggest areas. Um, for commercial work, under $25,000, a license is not required. So we get that call quite a bit because it's like hard to believe that nothing is required in order to do commercial work when it's under $25,000. And we also license the limited license electricians. They are ones uh, mainly in counties that do not have a codes office and uh, people will go there to pull permits and it's usually their electric department. And in the old days, it used to be a telephone company, a drugstore, but anybody can apply to sell permits via a permit issuing agent for these licenses. And the fire marshal's office uh, regulates these licenses and does <laughs> uh, they regulate these um, electricians by doing the inspections. We do the licensing, but they actually go out and uh, see them on a daily basis. They have to take a exam, and uh, it's just that's pretty much all you have to do to get a license is pass an exam. They don't have to have proof of insurance with us. Although if they have employees, they still have to have workers comp. And of course, it's just good practice for them to have general liability. We also have something similar, just like the limited license electricians, and it's called the limited license plumbers. Um, basically, it's the same setup. Um, we don't have a license for HVAC for under $25,000. However, the law does say that anybody that does the electrical connections, the hookup of the HVAC, they do need a electrical license. So they either have to have an LLE or an electrical contractor's license. And Again, one of the things that's very important for them to uh, any contractor that you all hire and uh, if you do it for work or if you do it personally, make sure they have uh, general liability insurance 
And if they have employees, they need to be covered uh, with workers' comp. You can actually go to the Department of Labor's website and check anybody to see if they have workers' comp insurance. So you, you can find that real easily. And just a couple of reasons for why you need workers' comp. <laughs> There we go. Oh, my clipper's just, uh, I ain't got the hang of it yet. There we go. Okay. Because some of these contractors will do anything to get a job done. Uh, one, he's helping him up on the ladder. <laughs> well, that's, I think that's it on my picture. Um, another part of our section is um, revision. So if you have a contractor that wants to bid a job that's coming up and uh, they're lacking a classification or they need a, uh, their monetary limit doesn't cover it, they can apply to Rhonda and get a license revision. So if they need it pretty quick, they can get what's called a hardship to get an early review by the board. So. Uh, if you have anybody that comes to you crying and said, I really need this job, I really want this job, tell them they just need to apply for an increase or, uh, or a reclass, just revision to get that, to get legal. And some of the um, different types of revisions include um, their, their name. A lot of them would like to bid in a company name and their license is in an individual name. So that we try to educate them that they need to contract in the name that they're licensed as and, and the mode of operation because if they don't, uh, there's been cases where the homeowner would not pay them because they're considered unlicensed because under the law, a uh, contractor does not have any recourse except for documented expenses that are found to be unlicensed. They're also to be unlicensed just if they let their license expire for a short time. Even though their license was current when they pulled the permit or they signed the contract, they have to be licensed throughout the whole phase or it could cause them, especially if it's an angry homeowner, it could cause them to lose all their profit on the job. So um, a lot of them will change their mode of operation with the Secretary of State, but they won't change it on their license. And it does get confusing. So when that happens, um, they, they do need to go through us and make sure their license is correct. But again, Rhonda does all those revisions and the board has to approve them every other month when they meet. <laughs> okay. Another uh, reason for licensing is to provide a level playing field and make it fair for everybody. So all contractors uh, that are licensed, they're competing against people that aren't properly licensed or licensed at all. And these ones that are licensed, they have gone through a lot of time. Uh, they've done, uh, so they spent a lot of money to get uh, their license. They, They've worked, they've earned getting the license, but uh, it costs a lot to, uh, the exam itself is only $57 to take the exam, but the books and studying, and some of them do to go to prep classes and they those can get expensive. And then the CPA review financial statement, those can be quite costly too. So, and then you've got your insurance. So a lot of the unlicensed contractors aren't covered and so these that are licensed, they have to show proof of license uh, of insurance in order to get their license. So it's just, you know, it's only, uh, it's to keep everybody on a level, level playing field, I guess you call it, so. And this is something I'm sure you all know inside and out, but uh, you have to, Whenever you do take bids, you have to make sure the contractor lists everything on the outside of the bid envelope. Uh, their name, their license number, classification, um, 
expiration date, and they have to do the same for the subcontractors. If they fail to uh, list a subcontractor that's properly licensed, uh, and this is probably one of the biggest um, reasons for throwing out a bid is that their subcontractor isn't properly licensed. They'll, they'll call and say, well, it's in process, I paid my fee. And they do, they'll like, they might go online and pay their fee the day before the bid, but it takes us a few days to process it. So when, when they submit that bid, uh, they, or they must be active or it would be considered um, unlicensed and it throws out everybody's bid. The prime loses and the other subs that bid lose. Of course, um, Department of General Services and Department of Transportation, they are exempt from listing, having to list all this. They can list it on the inside. And transportation doesn't uh, even require them to be licensed unless it's, they go 21 days after they get a job in the license. So that's quite fair. But. And again, this is just part of our laws and our rules. And um, I do have good news. We we are in the process of finally printing law books. Um, the printer is uh, charging us fourteen thousand dollars to print a thousand books. And but we finally get did get approval because going online and looking at the law book is so much harder. And we finally convinced the department that we need paper law books to send out to everybody. So hopefully we'll have enough to send out to all of you all and any others that want a law book. So again, the laws when it comes to bidding is under the laws and the rules and uh, it explains who needs a license. It's pretty much anybody or any firm that submits a bid to install anything, to build anything, to move anything. So uh, it's pretty it's pretty broad in the law. So any, you have to be licensed anytime uh, uh, on a construction project that falls in the definition when it's $25,000 or more. And uh, they do have a, um, well, this is just an example of a contractor that's let his license lapse. Uh, he can go online and renew his license pretty quickly. If he does it online, it only takes a few days. But again, uh, they think they have a 12 month grace period. Uh, their grace period just gives them um, time to get it in. Uh, because after 12 months, they have to reapply for a license. So even though they have a grace period, they just can't work during that time until their license is renewed. And um, something else I want to make sure, uh, they do have a monetary limit on their license, and they are allowed to exceed that by 10%. So a lot of them use that 10%. And that's per bid, right? Per bid. Yeah, because, yeah, okay. <laughs> Itself. This is uh, just more of the procedures for part of listing on the bid envelope. The prime contractor has to make sure that his information is listed or it will and get thrown out and that they're licensed. They're also only allowed to list one subcontractor. Doesn't mean that more than one subcontractor can work on a job, but they can only use uh, list one subcontractor, and the one they listed they have to contract with. Now that one they contract with can certainly subcontract it out to another licensed contractor, but um, they, they can only list one. If something comes up, like you have problems with a the contractor that's the subcontractor that's listed on the bid, or if you they can't get bond to do the job, or the owner just simply doesn't want them, you can go ahead and use another contractor. 
but you have to, it can't be because you found another subcontractor that has a lower price. It has to be something that um, the subcontractor listed is in agreement with. Otherwise, he can turn around and file a complaint. Good one. There we go. And there, um, they can be penalized under the CC26 120 law. Uh, they can actually be, um, they're considered unlicensed if, if they bid with a, uh, exceeding their limit or their classification doesn't cover their job, they can be considered unlicensed, so they fall under penalty. If it's a new contractor that's unlicensed and he uh, bids the job before getting the license, then uh, the board will not allow them to participate on the job. Even though they've been awarded the contract, uh, they cannot do the job and the board can actually hold their license for six months. Okay, and then again, this is everything that the license certificate has on it. It's pretty much the same thing that is on the bid envelope. Uh, the law doesn't require them to list their monetary limit on the outside envelope, although a lot of uh, state agencies have found who want them to list it on there, but the law does not require it. Okay. I'm so sorry. That's just more uh, this is a, a good law, and I think it was your association that presented uh, this bill and it actually gives the awarding authority 48 hours to uh, correct a bid that's been submitted. Prior to this law, uh, if a contractor made a typo or left something off, um, had to throw out the bid. And it was awful because every contractor, they watched this very carefully. So if a contractor made a mistake, listing something on his bid envelope, they would, they would call in and say, you know, he hasn't bought the law. So this law allows, uh, it gives the awarding authority a little leeway so they can make changes if uh, they find something needs to be corrected, especially typos. Anyway, but um, one of the one of the um, violations we often get is a contractor bidding under another name. Uh, a lot of times we find out that they've actually formed another company with someone else. Uh, it may be somebody that can't get a license or uh, due to a felony conviction or um, outstanding judgment so they can't get a license so they'll open up another company on the side with this contractor and sometimes they mess up and they'll contract under that new company uh, but they do have to contract under exact their exact name as license And we did get that part added in a rule, so to clarify that. <laughs> okay, this is just a list of frequent errors. I think we may have covered it already, but uh, one of the things about exceeding their monetary limit, a lot of contractors will try to split the contract in phases. Um, and you can't do that. Um, the, the Attorney General's rule that it's the total project and you can't split it up in phases to circumvent the law. So um, 
we do have an issue that happens quite often is when they've been a three to five year contract. And those, uh, those can be so uh, confusing because contractors, in some of those cases, they won't even get close to that limit. But they do have to have that limit to cover whatever amount is going to be on that total contract. And then again, um, just we have contractors that are out of state. We do have a reciprocal agreement, but it's only an exam. They still have to get a Tennessee license. So many of them will come in and they'll say, you reciprocate with Tennessee, so I want to take my Georgia license and work here. Well, it doesn't work like that. They, but uh, we do have, we have learned that many county uh, permit agencies have been letting them work because they think we do reciprocate with the license, but it's actually we just reciprocate with the exam. They still have to get a license. But, um, but that's some of the main errors that we have. And it is, it's bad when uh, a prime contractor's bid gets thrown out because of something his subcontractor did and he didn't follow up to check to make sure they were properly licensed. So a lot of things can go wrong. <laughs> we do have family members that seem to think that once their um, their parents that own the license, usually the father, if they pass away, they think they can keep on contracting. So it's very important if there's a family business um, that you check to see if the, the owners are correct. Uh, you usually can tell if a, biz, uh, a company has been in business for years, been licensed for several years, and then all of a sudden they start getting complaints. It's usually when you can tell that one of the children have taken over that really don't know what they're doing, and that's how we find out that uh, there's no longer a qualified agent uh, on the license and that the owner is probably deceased. So we do get that a lot, and but um, we do have um, some that uh, they think they were on the license, and their father probably even told them they were on the license, but their license is a sole proprietor, and they don't have workers' comp, there's nothing in there that shows that their, um, their son or uh, daughter worked for the company. So they have to start all over and get their own license. We will let them get their father's license number and they can't even take the name, but they just have to supply insurance and a financial statement to show that they're financially solvent. We do have the problem with all the license certificates. All of them look alike. So, uh, I mean, the pharmacy license looks like the contractor's license, uh, auctioneers, they, all of them, uh, real estate. So a lot of them will try to use any license they have, uh, sometimes a security guard license to do electrical work and people that do the permits, they don't look at it real close. They just see it's that, that, it's that certificate. Oops, it's moving real fast now. Okay, there we go. Um, we do get calls a lot about whether or not a contractor is properly licensed uh, to cover the bid. But what the law says, if, uh, if you're commercial, you can bid anything. Um, but if you're commercial and you don't have the license to uh, say, for instance, do asbestos work, but you would have to hire uh, someone that's licensed to do the asbestos unless they had that license. Uh, but a commercial can get anything or a contractor with a classification that covers 60% of the job. So say the contract was 60% asbestos, then a contractor that's licensed with us or just asbestos can be the prime contractor on the job. And then anything else, it's a dental to it, he can suck out to another contractor. So it's just 
your classification has to cover 60% of a job. And, um, but whenever you're taking bids, if it's a job that has a variety of uh, work on there and the contractor has a specialty that, that would cover it, you might ask for them to, you might ask to require a commercial contractor because you're going to need somebody that can oversee the whole job and um, also do the planning, make sure the electricians and the plumbers aren't coming in at the same time if there's any kind of work like that. So um, one example would be a, um, I think I got a call from somebody, I don't know if they're in here, it was a, a BMX bike park. Is anybody in here? Oh, well, I don't think I got back to you on that, but I did talk to a board member because we figured the specialty contractor could do a BMX bike park. But his opinion was they needed a commercial classification because he said you're going to need somebody that, like if there's going to be a recreational room or bathrooms, things like that, uh, the landscaping, excavation, you're going to need a commercial contractor that can organize and coordinate all that in which a uh, contractor that doesn't have that classification would do it. So, so he recommended a commercial contractor uh, that the contractor have that classification. But again, the law says they just need a classification that covers 60% of that project. So they could very well get a license classification. It's like a specialty uh, that falls under uh, recreational uh, equipment. I think we have one that's recreational equipment uh, that's like uh, it, it sort of covers all areas when it comes to parks. There's also like chess courts, swimming pools, things like that that falls in sort of the specialty area, the specialty subcategories. But again, the your classification does have to cover 60% of it. Oops. <laughs> Did I knock it out? Yeah. I think that was pretty much it. Other than I was going to show up our website address and our phone number and everything. But I know I went through that pretty quickly. I get nervous talking. Oh, thank you. Let me get it back to where um, it's got a website on. Oh, I uh, didn't let you know we have a, a, a help desk now. Uh, they have, I think it's about a dozen individuals that are trained um, to take messages and answer questions. And if they can't answer questions, then they do a ticket to us. And I think I went past it. They, they do a ticket to us and we get the answer for them. But you can go online and talk to um, the help desk. There we go. So it's, um, it's on our main site. Or you can just contact us in the office and that's our website and uh, our website address and my email and telephone number. I'm bad about returning emails and phone calls. It's, it gets a little overwhelming and I tend to whatever fire is needs to be put out the, the soonest. It's usually what I'm working on until maybe the third or fourth call from Terry and I realize <laughs> I got. I got to stop. <laughs> I need to. I need to get a response to him. So, but I apologize about that. It's not intentional. It just. It gets a little busy. But uh, I know I went through it pretty fast. Does anybody have any questions? Oh, surely we have questions. Licensing is complex. While you're formulating your questions, somebody asked me um, one thing that. Our trade group is likely to approach the state this year, raising asking the state to allow us to raise our bid limit to fifty thousand. If that were to pass, the question was, how does that interact? Because we wouldn't necessarily have a sealed bid for relatively minor projects. But also related, I know there, are, I think Knox County is one, but there are places that take electronic bids, and it works somehow without a sealed envelope. So you might address that. Okay. Yeah. 
I haven't heard about the 50,000. We haven't yet asked any of the state. Okay. For, and that's for Bidlin and not yeah. the years. So uh, hopefully that doesn't pass. I mean, that would be going uh, backwards. No, <laughs> not for us. I'm not worried to. Okay. I was thinking, I, I no, just no. wanted to say you don't have to list that on the. The 50,000, we, we don't have to bid things until 50,000. Oh, okay. That's fine. That's fine. I thought you meant no license. So, right now, if, if we bid something at 25 and it's construction, it has to be in the seal, more or less in the sealed envelope. But if we move that to 50, yeah. your law or the how board. How impact that? Yeah, how would we work that? You just would, we, we would do a rulemaking. Once that law passed, we would just need to do a rulemaking to follow up with it and make sure everything's covered that so y'all can do that. We would probably get quotes, for instance, they might not be in a sealed envelope. It wouldn't be a sealed envelope, but that be a big that would be the game changer. Right now it says outside sealed envelope or the electronic. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it twenty five thousand would not be a sealed envelope. How would right. that affect contractors licensing? Well, I mean it should only affect that area. I mean they it's Tennessee, I think, is like one of the only states that require all of that. And so I think we could easily copy how they do it and get a process set up. But um, you would figure out a way. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know what it is now, but, <laughs> but yeah, we could, we could easily figure out a way to get that incorporated with our law. And I mean, we have calls every day saying, you mean to tell me uh, I'm a, a private citizen and if I want to bid something out, it has to be in a sealed envelope. And it's like, that's what the law says. We're not going to come out and check you, you know, but uh, that's that's what it says. It's sort of an uh, odd law. And uh, again, I think Tennessee is like one of the only ones that has it. So, but yeah, that, that does sound like a pretty good law. And especially if it helps you all. Uh, but uh, and then you've got everybody's been doing the virtual envelope bids, so doing the you know electronic bids. So that should be a easy setup as well. Now, I'll do, I'll I think it's kind of cutting in. Um, just you know, in our system, you possibly all they have to do is just scan a copy of them and attach it. We can't open their electronic submittal until two you know our bid opens at two o'clock, so they have the scan. Yeah, I knew you guys had done it successfully. Yeah. Is it is it like a, a, a app or something that you subscribe subscribe to to get the electronic bids? Seems like a lot of them have been using this um a company that does it for them, or it's either a company or a app or program. And we have our own. Um, Maybe Bid Express, does that sound familiar? Yeah, we have two vendors here that would be able to do that also. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. But yeah, and, um, and that's great to be able to do electronically. I think. Uh, when they first started doing the electronic bids, they started requiring them to be turned in like two days sooner. And so that's why they changed the law to say, you cannot require it to be prior to the bid day. Because a lot of them were, they were having to send in their bids early just because they were being penalized because they were doing it electronically. Yes. Um, I have a question. Um, I know they heard licenses um, or state law. It says that the contractors or stuff, their name on the envelope matches exactly how the license is issued. Was that new typo? Does that give exception to that or no? And I'll tell you, I had a situation, um, I don't know if they contacted you, this was a few years back, but it was a contractor that everyone knew and um, it was like, Joe Smith Electrical, DBA, ABC Electrical. Yeah. So we ended up throwing the bid out. It was millions of dollars. Trust me, now all my BCs and stuff to make sure they're matched exactly because yeah. they don't want to be thrown out. 
and we had to rebid it. So is that it has to be exactly like that, that all of that, or what? Well, our board hasn't made a formal opinion about it, and I don't think they will, but they pretty much say um, individually that, that law gives the owner a whole lot of leeway. So uh, when it comes to going back and having the uh, having the bid envelope corrected, so it's sort of up to the owner, and then you have to be careful that a, another bidder isn't going to come back at you. It, you just have happened. to. You needed that favor, you know, somebody else, another bidder was complaining, and the attorney said to throw it out and start all over, and that's what we did. Yeah. And but it was, yeah. But but now they're, they're certain their, their names match. Yeah. Oh, I know. It, <laughs> I it gets it ridiculous. I mean, he used to help in school. Of oh yeah. There were millions of dollars. Yeah. Yeah. That happened anyway. I yeah. was curious. We ended up throwing it out, and it was ugly. <coughs> oh yeah. Those yeah. Were those ugly kind of yeah, we we've, we've had quite a few ugly ones. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at me. <laughs> and they're usually I'm um, Jerry there. In fact, in fact, now they have it so uh, contractors can no longer come to our office or any anyone from the public uh, can no longer come up to our office. I think probably that has something to do with uh, But yeah, so now if we have any, any members of the public, we have to go down to see them. And then, uh, but we don't break them back up. So that's a little different because they're wanting to come up. They're like, they're used to coming in and bringing their books and sitting down and staying for a while. I don't know why they do that. They like but renewal time. They like to come in and bring everything and they'll set up their own office in our office, but they, they no longer can come and do that. Can you summarize the local government's responsibilities with contractor licensing? Uh, the local government's responsibilities is pretty much just uh, making sure they're licensed and that they're properly licensed and that uh, they're within their limit and classification. Um, pretty much, you know, just going following that law uh, and making sure you don't you protect yourself from getting sued by a contractor. You don't have anything to worry about us coming at you because we pretty much uh, allow it to be, it's up to the owner to make a decision. But yeah, local government, they just they just need to make sure they're properly licensed and following the bid procedures in the law. I don't know if that covered what you were talking about. Yeah. Does Tennessee have reciprocal agreements with all other states or only select other states? It's only the bordering states, and again, it's only with the trading sound. So, like with Georgia, they reciprocate with the electrical exam and uh, the commercial exam. Um, the residential board in Georgia will not reciprocate with us. We, we don't know why, but it's just each different board, uh, it's up to them to reciprocate. So, but like Mississippi and Louisiana. North Carolina, South Carolina, but that is beginning to change. Uh, the federal government is looking at making a uniform law because they do not like the fact that they can't go state to state. So that's something they have a task force looking at now, and uh, part of it is doing away with a lot of licensing. I don't know if y'all heard of the Beacon Center, do y'all? They are uh, also uh, in the process of helping them do away with a lot of licensing. Some of it needs to be done away with, uh, like the polygraph. I think there might be like four or five licenses. So it's like you really don't need a polygraph board. So uh, I think that other, the locksmiths, they've been after them. They're, they're wanting to do away with that board as well. So some of them, it makes sense. but. Uh, they uh, are wanting it to be more like the, the county board where uh, a CPA can work from state to state or like a doctor or a nurse, 
uh, it, it's set up easier for them to, but for contractors, it's they had to jump through all the same hoops in each state. So that's something they are looking at. Any other questions? Okay. Well, thank you so much for having me here.